Today I have Nikkor's new T4K, the world's smallest 4000 lumen light. This is a continuation on Nikkor's trend of coming up with increasingly larger, higher performance keychain style lights with the tip and the tub and now the T4K. Thanks to Nikkor for saying this one to me to look at it in review and I'll have a link to where you can find it if you are interested. Here is the packaging that the T4K comes in, and it's a really nice box and kind of reminds me of what Olight's doing recently, except I like this black better. You've got a feature list on the back. This would look great on a retail shelf. When you open it up, it is a magnetic closure box there, as you can see, and you've got that thank you message in there. You don't get much in terms of accessories with this light. You get a quick detach keychain here that I'm not gonna use right now. You get a manual, you get a warning card about using lockout mode. If you've seen my other videos, you know this is really important on high output lights. And you get a micro USB A to C cable to charge the T4K. The T4K here will look very similar to the Nikkor TUP, which I have here in the background. If you're an owner, it's very, very similar in terms of construction and it's just scaled up just a little bit. It is made from black anodized aluminum shell and it's split here in the center. You've got a, two buttons here. You've got a power and a mode button and then you can kind of see on the screen as well. That screen is pretty neat on all what it does. It tells you the lumen level you're on, the mode, and then the approximate runtime, which is pretty cool. The branding on here is pretty minimal. You've just got branding at the top and the bottom, and then on the side, there's nothing anywhere else. At the front here, you see the optic and the quad LEDs there. More on that in a minute. At the back side, you've got this quick disconnect connector here, which you just squeeze the middle here and it comes loose. If you wanted to attach a lanyard or uh, the keychain mount, that's the best place to do it. That way you can detach it quickly and easily. And it's a pretty strong mount. They're saying it'll hold 66 pounds. You then have a USB-C connector here and that's for recharging. There's no cover on here and I really don't think one's necessary. We're all carrying around smartphones with USB-Cs or lightning connectors on them and they're waterproof. So while it'd be nice to keep the dirt and the grime out, it's probably not necessary here. And then here's the pocket clip on the back and I'll talk more about that in the retention section. Underneath here, the light does have a metal cooling hardware, which is kind of neat. When the light's on in its turbo mode, it's kind of neat feel it because the heat does spread out through the bottom here. So that is effective and it works well. I measured the length at 36.34 millimeters, width at 29 millimeters, thickness at the head at 25.2 millimeters, weight with the clip and quick detach was 76.3 gram. The T4K is IPX54 rated, which means splashing water and dust should be fine. When I compare it to the TUP here, it, which the TUP comes in at 53.9 grams, it's smaller in all dimensions here. The the T4K is very similar in design, just bigger everywhere. And to give you a little bit more of a size comparison here, it is against some other popular keychain style lights here on the right, and then the Olight S1R Baton 2 on the left. Retention here is good. You've got a big clip here at the back side. It's got two screws that holds it on, and it's pretty springy here. I don't think this is going to go anywhere, and it's stout enough it's not going to snag. It is assembled with Phillips screws, whereas the rest of the light's assembled with uh, small torques, which is kind of interesting to see. The clip does allow the light to sit pretty low in the pocket as you can see here but due to the diameter here I probably won't carry it that way as mentioned before that the back here is that quick disconnect for a lanyard or a keychain attachment point you're gonna have to have something fairly small to go through that bottom loop but then you can attach a paracord or something like that to it if you wanted to the t4k has four Cree XP l2 v6 LEDs in cool white no exact tint data is given but it's pretty standard cool white not super blue the beam pattern out of the optic is fairly round but far from perfect and it has a few artifacts but it's only really noticeable on a wall or flat surface not really in use in my opinion it's a large spot with very minimal spill and that's a little bit surprising because I was expecting this to have quite a bit of flood rather than tell you about the official data I will put up a slide from Nikkor all right guys here are my night shots for the Nikkor T4K thanks for joining me out on this snowy night this is running the Cree XP L2 V6 LED in cool white I've got it on daily mode and this is low lowest mode one lumen you can get a good idea of the beam here next up is 65 lumens and this gives you a good idea of what it throws to not a bad mode here lights up the backyard with the snow pretty well and this is high of 200 lumens pretty good out of a keychain style light but where this light really shines is turbo this is full 4,000 lumens and you can see it's really bright really floody throws decently well but it doesn't last very long that was 10 seconds roughly we can poke it again here and see it 
is a ton of light out of something this small. No wonder it's the world's brightest, smallest light. For comparison, here's the Nikkor Tup. This is a thousand lumens in its turbo mode. It's got a round beam, one LED, and you can kind of see that in the beam shape here. And then here is the T4K's 4000. And when it does step down here, it's 200. It's not great that it only lasts for 10 seconds. And if you keep running it like I do here, it'll get a little bit shorter. It's pretty cold out here tonight, so it's doing well. In my hand, it's warm, but I can still hold it pretty easily here. So pretty cool. And it can do some neat effects with the heat too. So just a crazy amount of light. 200 lumens here isn't too bad and pretty usable, but 4,000 is a huge step up and really reflects off the snow to make it look impressive. So turbo runtime is gonna be easier if I just show you here due to the sample rate of my light meter. So let's do that instead. Remember this is 4,000 lumens out of something that's really small. So when I turn this on, you can see it says 4,000, Nikkor, and it gives a countdown here. And this is good for about 10 seconds when you first run it. And as we count down here, it will reset and drop down to 200 lumens but I can manually reset it and it'll go back to 4,000. You can see your bar wasn't full there and it's going quicker as it heats up. Now I'm in a cold basement here, so it might do a little bit longer, but that was second. This is the third run. Let's just see how many of these we get. Fourth run. You can see that one was quite a bit shorter, about halfway. Fifth run, just a little bit. And six runs, probably about all we're gonna get to here. We'll do it one more time on seven. But yeah, pretty much as soon as you turn it on, it turns it off. And this is warm. It's this front part is warm. And like I said, the heat spreads down the body here. So the top isn't nearly as warm as the bottom. I wish I had a thermal camera to show you this because it's interesting and it's got heat dissipation, not like a traditional flashlight. Nikkor has done really well there. Tested this before, I got six runs and the thermal couple during my test said it was up to 52C on the sides, 126 degrees, but it doesn't feel that hot in the hand. During normal modes of that 200 lumens in the highest mode, it gets slightly warm. Uh, one interesting thing here too is you can check the battery level. If you just press the uh, up button there, and you can see that it dropped from 4.2 volts to 3.9, which, well, yeah, that's a lot of power for just those few short runs. Normal run times are pretty good. They have flat outputs until you run out of power and with a small spike at the end to let you know the battery's done. I tested high and came up a little bit short of Nikkor's official rating of two hours and 45 minutes with two hours and 17 minutes. So you might take their other numbers with a small grain of salt as well. UI, the light ships with two UIs with the default being demo mode, which given the package is sealed without a window, I can't think of a really a reason why it ships in demo mode other than if something accidentally got pressed, I guess. Nikkor says this is is, then it's also got a default usage or daily, which is what I'm in now. Nikkor says this is for EDC use and I like it because it allows you to turn the light on and then turn it off when you want to, not uh, timed out. Daily mode is pretty straightforward and what you'd expect. Um, you got the power button here at the bottom and once it's on, it does have memory. So I was on 65 lumens there before, but you've got the one lumens, 15 lumens, 65 lumens and 200. And each of these modes, the light will tell you about how long it thinks it can run in that mode. So one lumen, it thought it could run for 55 minutes, 15 lumens, uh, 16 minutes, you know, and on up we go. So that's kind of neat. The light has direct access to low and turbo to access low when the light's off and not locked, press and hold the power button to access the one lumen mode. To access turbo, press and hold the mode button there and you get the full 4,000 lumens. The light also has two lockout modes. Lock one is half lockout mode and it locks the power button. So if you press and hold it, the mode button, you get lockout, you get access to turbo. To exit lockout, you have to hold both buttons at the same time. And in lockout mode two, the light won't turn on until it's unlocked. And if you're gonna carry this in a bag or on your person, lockout two is probably, internally the Nikkor T4K has a 1000 milliamp hour polymer battery for recharging. The light has USB-C on the rear here. And the interesting thing is that it doesn't have that port cover to prevent dust and water entry, but I don't think that's a big deal. As I said before, we all carry around smartphones with mostly with exposed ports 
parts and things end up being fine. So the total charge time of the internal battery was one hour and 20 minutes with a max charge rate being 1.1 amps at the 32 minute mark. The light does support charging via USB-C to C cable and USB-C PD, which is the way it should be. And it's nice that the display voltage tells you the voltage while you're charging too. So the pros for me are, it's nice to see USB-C being used here that's fully compatible, but a port cover would be kind of nice. I like the screen and it gives a lot of useful information like output, estimated runtime, and battery voltage. UI makes some sense here, but remember just to lock it out if it's being carried to prevent an accidental blast of 4,000 lumens and have something melted. The cons are, for me, this is just too big to be a keychain. It's more of a jacket pocket style like. Turbo's short runtime, but that's to be expected for 4,000 lumens out of something this size. And I think this is pricey if you think of it as a keychain light but not terrible if you think of it more as a pocket light. My conclusion on the Nikkor T4K is that it produces a ton of light from such a small package, but I don't really think it should be called a keychain style light. If I've got a competitor here, the Ron Von Aurora light, you can see how much smaller it really is. It's tiny. It's just quite a bit larger than I want to actually carry on my actual keychain, especially if I try to put them in my pants pockets, which I sometimes do. I think this works better as something to put in a jacket pocket and run times here on the lower modes are long enough that I think you could realistically go walk your dog with this but more than likely if you wanted but uh, the in the UI is such that if you wanted an easy 200 4000 lumen boost if you need more lights that's doable the mode spacing gap here is huge though between 200 and 4000 lumens I think a mode of a thousand lumens or 1500 would be nice to bridge that gap especially if it'd give you a minute or two of runtime versus the 10 seconds that the 4000 gives you I don't always talk about price but I feel like I kind of have to here the current MSRP of the T4K is around $80 at the time of filming of this review and I feel like that's on the price side for the market here that's targeted at a keychain light. Sure, it's got the output, the screen, and the USB-C, but that's just a lot. One other thing I wanted to tell you was when it is bright, you've got the uh, lens that kind of shows through here. It's kind of like a side indicator, and I think that's really cool. Just something different. I think the TUP might be more of a practical keychain light, but the T4K is the output king. If you want something to impress someone with how bright it can be for how small it is, especially if you're going to carry it on your keychain, the T4K does a great job of that, and I can recommend it. Let me know what you think of the T4K in the comments below, guys. And make sure you're subscribed, follow me on social media, and I will catch you on the next review soon.